by way of showing an example of how to write a for loop, I want to show how to just do a very simple bootstrap uh, of an estimator to get a bootstrapped sampling distribution. So even if you don't know what that is, I'll describe it. Um, and this application will show you how to write a for loop in R. Uh, we're able to estimate a regression or estimate means or sort of whatever statistics we want to using this data set. But let's go and run the line here. So we just ran a line that actually counted the number of observations and stored it in an object called n. n equals 136. So that's going to be useful if we're ever wanting to use the number 136, but do so generally in a way that we can extend to other data sets. We're going to compute a couple of statistics. We're going to then store them and then ask ourselves, well, what if we reshuffled and just drew observations from the sample that we already have with replacement? That is, we, uh, we draw 136 observations from the set of 136, but each time that I, I redraw, each observation has a 1 in 136 chance each time I draw. If we do that, the resulting sample is called a bootstrapped sample. That R has a really nice function that does this resampling for us. It's called sample. The first argument to this sample function is the data from which we are sampling. Here, uh, it's going to be the integers from 1 to 10. And let's say we want to get a sample of size 7 from this. Let's just run that line. We took a sample of size 7 and notice there were no repeats. We could repeat this a bunch of times and none of the samples are going to have repeats. That is, once I draw, for example, in this sample here, once I've drawn 2, I can't draw it again because I've taken it out of that set of 1 through 10. And what we'll need to do is specify another argument here, and it's called replace. Should, replace should be true. So if we, if we say sample 1 through 10, we're going to draw 7 obs observations from, this, from 1 through 10, replace equals true. This is going to uh, potentially re produce repeats. And lo and behold, we did get some repeats. We got uh, 10 was repeated. Uh, and that's that's okay, and that's actually precisely the type of sample that we're going to be dealing with when we're thinking about a bootstrap sample. Now, these aren't quite bootstrapping the uh, the sample of one through ten. Well, the sample of one through ten has to, we have to have uh, a sample of size ten from that set of numbers of size ten that we drew with replacement. So here's a bootstrap sample from those integers. There was nothing special about going 1 through 10. A bootstrap sample from the integers 11 through 20 is just going to be a sample of size 10. There's a bootstrap sample from that set of numbers. Yeah. Um, and we want to apply this to our, our data set. We want to draw a sample of our observations with replacement of size 136. So if we run this command, we'll get a sample with replacement of size 136. Lo and behold, there is a sample of, of indices that gives us uh, that gives us just numbers 1 through 136 sampled with replacement. And that is a bootstrapped sample of our observations. Instead of just running this sample, I could store this sample in something, I'm just going to call it IDX uh, for index. This is now going to be a vector of indices that we want to reference to think about just getting a, a new data set on which uh, to compute some statistics. We want to do this, this bootstrap sample a bunch of different times. I can use the vector of indices as the row um, of, uh, to reference the row of my data frame. And if I do that and store my data frame in a new data frame, what is this going to do? Well, let's go and run this. So what, what you'll see is we've got a whole bunch of different observations. And you know, now we've got some row numbers here, or row labels. And these row labels are telling us, well, where was this in the original data frame? And it's giving us sort of new, uh, a new data set 
with the same variables. It's going to be the same length, but the only difference is that it just corresponds to each of these observations. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Maybe what we can do is then for each time we do this, we could uh, use the new data. Well, let's see. So, so we reshuffle the data set. These are observations that were in our data frame. We could say instead of using the ads data, we could use the new uh, the new data frame that we actually obtained. And I'm just going to call this clicks.lm2. And let's just run these two regressions and see uh, if we detect any differences. Uh, well, let's just do coef clicks.lm. This will give us the coefficients. Uh, those are the coefficients on the original data. Now, what about the data that we just reshuffled and uh, we did this sample with replacement, so there are some duplicate observations? Probably not going to have the same numbers. Oh, in fact, we got quite a different number for the intercept. Um, pretty similar number for, uh, for the slope. So here's going to be the plan and the idea about bootstrapping. We will construct a, a bunch of bootstrap samples. We'll do this repeatedly. And we'll keep uh, computing the same statistic and then store it every single time in some storage vector. Once we have that, the resulting vector of statistics that we computed is what's called a bootstrap sampling distribution. We can plot it. We can say, take a look at it and see what, uh, what it looks like. And that's going to give us something that will be useful for inference. So this was just to demonstrate uh, how that we could actually compute the linear model and compute the regression just based off of this, uh, this reshuffled data. And now that's what we're going to do, but we're going to do it in a much more automated process. So let's go ahead and define the, uh, let's go ahead and define a for loop. And here's the syntax for a for loop. So what you do is you say for, and then you use some index. And this index you can reference as a variable inside here, uh, inside of this for loop. And so you do open parentheses, close parentheses. You say for your index, the word in, and then the set that you want to sort of loop over. So as long as i is between 1 through b, here I'm going to compute uh, a new bootstrap. I can use that to get myself a new bootstrap data set. Then I can use that to compute a regression. So there's, there's the command for regression, just using linear models and predicting clicks based on the number of impressions that you see and, and using the bootstrap data set. So then finally, once I have the, uh, once I have this regression, I can, I can store any statistic that I'm interested in. So, so for example, I might, I might want to obtain r squared. Uh, so as I showed right here, you can uh, use the summary command and then the dollar extractor, r dot squared, and that will give you r squared. But I need a place to store my r squared values, and I want to do this. I want to do this b times. So in this case, way up here, I'm going to set b to be 200. So I'm just going to run that, make sure it's there. So b is 200. I want to do this 200 times, and I need to have a place to store the R squared from each time I compute this. So let's uh, get a storage vector equals. And what you can do is initially just set all of the values to be something that would just be crazy. So what you can do is you can use you can define this vector before you even run this for loop. Defining this vector will give you a place like once you're in this for loop to store your uh, your various statistics two equals summary dollar r squared so now we can obtain our r squared values and we can store it uh, in each one of these now keep in mind that for the first one we want to store it in the first element of this vector for the second one we want to store it in the second element and so on and so forth to do that, we can say store it in the ith element of this storage vector, and that's going to give us the r squared value uh, for the ith bootstrapped regression. So 
let's go ahead and just do this and run kind of all of this all, all of this stuff to make sure that everything's all set up it's just beforehand see what our square looks like well our storage vector is just a bunch of zeros 200 of them to be exact let's see what happens when we run this for loop remember for each i this for loop and we have this curly brackets around what we want to do uh, for each i so remember what for each of these we're going to get a new bootstrap sample we'll get new we'll use that to construct a new data set construct a linear model called clicks.boot and then store the r squared value in our storage vector here so let's go ahead and compute this just by running it and it ran and so let's take a look store r2 there are a whole bunch of r squared values so if we want to know what the distribution of r squared values looks like we can just do a histogram. This is uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, place in which we can take a look at what the what the sampling distribution might look like. There's some nice conditions under which a bootstrap distribution uh, is just like the sampling distribution of that statistic, and bootstrapping is kind of a nice way to sort of be very conservative about the assumptions that we use to generate. Uh, generate uh, our sampling distribution or to think about our sampling distribution so you might ask yourself well where is the actual computed value of r squared on on this val on this uh, on this histogram but if you do use the a b line command you can get a vertical line precisely where uh, the r squared is for our particular example the r squared for our particular case here looks like it's about right in the center of this distribution of r squared values you can see that this is this is going to be a nice application of using a loop uh, to perform very uh, a somewhat complicated task uh, you can do a whole bunch of different things inside of your loop and you can uh, you can specify your loop nice and flexibly uh, so that this can be extended really easily so if you're trying to actually do a bootstrap uh, this is this is a really easy to extend way to do a bootstrap in fact I didn't even need to do rep 0 uh, 200 I could have done rep 0 B if I wanted to change the number of bootstrap samples 4,000 instead let's just run this again so we ran it and it's thinking for a little bit and now what we can do is say well uh, now we'll have a storage vector uh, that's of length 4,000 because we did this flexibly. We can do the histogram, so that's that's going to be uh, that's that's going to be a useful way to think about this uh, the sampling distribution of R squared. So if if you if you're in a situation where you have a very small data set and you can't appeal to the large sample properties or some large sample asymptotic theorem that tells you what what to do uh, this is a nice way to get uh, get some confidence bounds on the value of your estimate and you can uh, you can use this to derive uh, this this method to derive uh, standard errors and uh, hypothesis tests and when you don't really know how to compute it uh, those standard errors uh, in theory um, so hopefully this is a nice introduction to how to write a for loop and how to do so flexibly